Next, I would like to invite Mr. Tom Utewal, Chairman of Environmental and Energy Business Council of European Chamber, to give a speech on renewable energy development of Europe and Asia, Perspectives for Hong Kong. He is the founder and CEO of Recon Energy Hong Kong Limited, a company that focuses on the UCO and biodiesel trade, turning municipal solid waste, MSW, into green electricity. He has been active in the waste to energy industry in Asia since 2008. Please put your hands together. Thank you. I uh, first would like to uh, thank the, the Green Council for uh, inviting me here today. So, um, so that I can share our, let's say, the European view on, uh, on renewable energy and how we, uh, how we approach it from our side. I had a, a, a chat with Felix, I think half a year ago, uh, uh, with an uh, interesting discussion about uh, power, uh, power production and uh, how we could make it more green and more renewable. And that's based on that discussion I'm here, here today. Um, why is it important to look at uh, the power, uh, power production, uh, especially in, in Hong Kong, because 67% of all carbon emission in Hong Kong is actually from electricity generation. So if you want to do something about uh, the carbon emissions, we need to do something about our electricity production. Um, so this is the, uh, this is actually from the, uh, the, uh, the was it from the, the action plan 2030 um, and it uh, it says about what what the the, the government is planned to do to uh, uh, to reduce the carbon emissions and uh, uh, this was already uh, addressed by our previous uh, speaker by reducing the carbon uh, carbon intensity by uh, 65 to 70 percent uh, mainly focusing on uh, uh, move, move, uh, replacing uh, coal by uh, by gas. Uh, there's also an an, it an uh, item about renewable energy. Uh, however, this is a bit more uh, open. Let's say there's less less targets on renewable energy than in the other areas. Um, this is the, uh, the 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 plan in more detail. Uh, what you see is that uh, the main focus is on replacing coal by gas. Uh, growing a nuclear, a nuclear uh, electricity generation. Uh, well with, if you look at uh, my European view, uh, there are no clear goals on, on renewables and also no, uh, no clear targets yet on, uh, on 2030 and beyond. Um, there is a part uh, about uh, renewable energy but it's more about uh, the renewable energy potential up to 2030. Um, uh, where there's a focus on sun, wind, and waste to energy. Um, th it's more like, okay, so what do we think we can achieve realistically in, in Hong Kong? And I'm, of course, here to challenge that. Uh, so that's, that's my role here today. Um, and it's clear that they want to support this via the feed-in tariffs and certificates. And we are, of course, we've seen the implementation of, uh, of this feed-in tariff by the Hong Kong government. And uh, uh, with a goal, I understand, of 660 megawatt by 2030, which is 1 to 1.5% 1 of the total power consumption in, in uh, Hong Kong. And uh, at the status in May, uh, 2,800 projects are approved and a current uh, production of 4 megawatt. Um, of course, it's very uh, positive that we, are, uh, that we have the feed-in tariff. Uh, what I really like about it is that everybody's talking about it. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, everybody's working on it. It's regularly in the press, uh, in a very positive, uh, positive way. Uh, people are. It's also made made uh, renewable energy also more tangible for people. Uh, I think before the feed-in tariff, it was uh, something which was uh, yeah a bit more of a concept. Yeah, but now it's more tangible. People can really do something about it, uh, and they can do something about it themselves. 
And I think that uh, uh, is a big, big support in the whole uh, discussion we have in Hong Kong uh, about renewable energy and renew renewable uh, power production. Uh, that said, on the other hand, of course, uh, we still have a long way to go. Uh, four megawatt uh, is, is very, very tiny looking at the total uh, power consumption of, uh, of Hong Kong. And uh, yeah, but it's a first, I think, a first good, uh, good step uh, we can uh, build on. Um, but if you look at, uh, let's say, uh, of course, we already have these kind of feed uh, tariffs in, in Europe in place. And there are actually uh, what, what we still, I think, where we st still can grow in Hong Kong is looking at the scope of the feed-in tariff we currently have. Um, I, I've put here, this is for example the feed-in tariffs in Germany. Uh, if you can see it's, it's, it's quite small because there are a lot of items. <laughs> uh, so there are a lot more, uh, so if you really want to embrace uh, renewable energy, embrace uh, renewable power uh, production, then you need to look, start looking at a, a a way wider group of uh, renewable energy sources. I think uh, Felix in the, in the beginning already mentioned a whole list of, of potential sources of renewable energy. And currently uh, in Hong Kong, we are only focusing on uh, solar and, and wind. Um, uh, I think also what, uh, what if you look at from our perspective as Europeans, uh, the what what is uh, interesting is the discussion we have about uh, renewable that it needs to be local. Are we limiting ourselves enormously by constantly saying that Hong Kong is small, uh, we're uh, densely populated, uh, we don't have a lot of space, but there are also <laughs> in Europe there are countries who don't have a lot of space but they look at, at a wider range because they just only look at local production, but you can also import. You can import, uh, for example, uh, the feedstocks you can use to produce renewable energy, or you can actually import the renewable energy yourself. And that's what I'm trying to bring here. Uh, look, also for the coal, the gas, the nuclear, we're using here in Hong Kong, we're all importing it. And nobody ever questioned uh, building a power plant uh, on coal because we don't have coal. Yeah? Everybody, for everybody, it was quite natural to say, okay, we're building a power plant and yes, we need to import the coal. And we're currently making the change to gas, uh, but we don't have any gas. So we need to import the gas. Uh, the nuclear, we have no nuclear power plant, uh, it's all imported. Uh, so I think if we really want to embrace uh, renewable uh, energy and electricity, then we need to look at, at a level playing field with all the other uh, energy sources we are using in Hong Kong uh, today. So overall, as I look, I think we need to see how can we broaden the scope of, uh, of the feed-in tariff or other support measures to see how we can uh, incorporate more renewable energy in Hong Kong. Uh, Felix asked me to look at some other countries to maybe we can come up with ideas to see how other countries are doing uh, both uh, in Asia and in Europe. Uh, of course, being in Hong Kong, the first, first thing we do is look at Singapore. Eh? That's mm -hmm. what we always do in, in any aspect. Uh, now, if you look at Singapore today, the, 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 the fuel mix is uh, 95% gas and some oil, uh, oil and coal. So the, the, the switch we are currently making uh, is, is, is already done by, uh, by Singapore. <coughs> uh, they have a, uh, a, a target of 4% should be solar by 2030. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a higher target. Uh, there's all, uh, they're already producing uh, more than, than we're doing today. And uh, they are not only looking at their local 
uh, what they locally can produce, but also looking at uh, how they call it region, regional power grids. And I think that's an also maybe an interesting thing to, to look at the regional <coughs> power grids, where they, for example, look at Malaysia. And Malaysia has a goal to have 20% uh, uh, renewable energy by 2025. So if you can tap into that, of course, you can increase your renewable energy content in Singapore already drastically. Um, yeah, so if you look at Singapore uh, regarding gas renewable energy, they are ahead of Hong Kong. Uh, their targets are higher. And, uh, and they can also uh, <coughs> look, or they're even looking further and see how can we uh, increase renewable energy by, by imports. Uh, of course, uh, Hong Kong still very focused, eh? historically focused on the UK. So I also looked at the UK. So what's the UK uh, doing? And these are the uh, these are the numbers from 2018 in the UK. Um, and what you see is that there's a, a steady growth uh, of uh, the use of renewable uh, energy in electricity production. In uh, 2018, uh, one third was al already uh, renewable, um, and second only <coughs> to gas. Um, if you look at uh, 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 the 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 different types of renewable electricity generation they're using. There's a, a variety of different things, and that's what I'm trying to bring across there. That you can look at uh, more different sources of renewable energy uh, to, to get this, this higher uh, percentage. One I would like to highlight is, for example, uh, bioenergy. Uh, actually, they are importing this. Right, so, so they acknowledge that, look, we have a certain amount of uh, renewable energy we can produce ourselves, but even in the UK, they need to look also at other sources and are importing certain types of renewable energy to make sure that they can reach the targets. Here I look at... Um, uh, renewable energy shares to power generation of European countries and China and Japan. Uh, also just to show uh, what is possible. Uh, sometimes <coughs> we need to look at other countries to see what is possible and how did they achieve this. Uh, so um, in uh, Europe, for example, Austria, uh, moving towards 80% of renewables. Uh, Denmark, uh, 75. Uh, so, so uh, uh, and you can see all the other percentages as well. So this is in 2018. It's not in the future. No, this is happening today. Uh, so, and, and I think that's what we need to look at, is that uh, there are countries who said, look, we are going to set targets for ourselves, and um, when you set targets for yourself, then you get creative. Because then you suddenly need to come up with the solutions. And uh, what you do see is that they come up with a wide range of solutions. Uh, so they look at, uh, and every country has their own, own uh, combination of, of, of solutions. Uh, so you see, uh, for example, Austria, yeah, they have uh, very, uh, very, uh, are very fo focused on small hydro, but they also have solar, they also have wind, and they also have biomass. But you need all to get to these percentages. Um, and so every, everyone has the, a different, different set. Um, what is also important and what can be a limiting factor is the, uh, is the, the, the black line, actually, this one. It's called variable renewable energy. And why is that important? Because uh, we all know if you focus on wind and solar, these are not stable electricity producers. 
these these are uh, solar is there when the wind uh, when when the sun is shining you have solar power but at night you don't have solar power wind wind power is only there when the wind is there if there's no wind you have no power this is a, this makes uh, uh, the whole electricity production of course way more complicated than when you have electricity uh, production which is running 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year uh, so uh, what is important to look at is that you focus on uh, both these variable renewable energy sources for example wind and solar but you also need to look at are there sources which are stable which are there all the time uh, and that's for example if I take for example uh, Denmark uh, yeah then you need stable source like biomass for example that one you can run whole year through you can run it in in your power plants and on top of that you have uh, the wind and the solar including of course a uh, new technology in storage and, and uh, uh, how to capture, uh, let's say, the peaks of the wind and the solar to make sure that you can also use it when there's uh, uh, less, less production. Uh, this is, uh, I, uh, I think, also very important. That's what I meant with setting your targets. Um, in this slide, what you can see is uh, uh, both a combination of actuals, but also targets. And uh, I heard I had a question about, do we have targets for 2100, <laughs> 2100, uh, for the year 2100? I think that's a bit too far out. Uh, but we have uh, con countries in Europe who are already having targets for 2050. And uh, because we all know that if you invest in electricity production, this is, this is an investment for the next 20, 30 years. Uh, so the, the investment you do now is for the next 20, 30 years. So if you don't think now about where you want to be in 2050, you make the wrong decision. Uh, so you need to have a clear path that where do I want to be in 2050, and then I can make the right investment decisions now. And what you can see, uh, uh, the, uh, we have policy targets. I will focus more on the, on the purple and the light blue. Uh, the policy targets for 2030 and also policy targets for 2050 in certain countries. And what is, of course, uh, interesting to see is that there are countries who are, have policy targets for 100%. 100% by 2030 and some 100% by 2050. And that's what I'm trying to bring across. I think that uh, we, uh, we need to open our mind and see other people are going to 100%. Uh, how can we do more? Because I think as, as Hong Kong, we are a very, very wealthy city. Eh? Uh, we are a first class city. And that means that that, that comes with responsibility. You need to take, take care of your, uh, eh, of your electricity production. So it is interesting to see, to take a look at these countries. How is it for these countries possible uh, to, to get to these kind of to these kind of percentages and what can we learn from that to see how we can uh, grow the renewable electricity um, share in in Hong Kong so uh, this is purely to what I'm trying to do is to let's say to open up the mind right uh, and that was uh, just going back to the 2030 plan, uh, uh, starting when you look at renewable energy and you start with uh, this is the max we can do, I think then you're closing, let's say, the, the blinders 
for yourself on what is really possible. And I think uh, there, is a l there are a lot of things possible for, uh, for Hong Kong. Um, and in that whole process, of course, the feed-in tariff is an excellent step. Full support, I think it's, uh, it puts renewable electricity, renewable energy on the map. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's busy with it. Uh, it's in the newspapers. It's tangible. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's what we need to get people involved and engaged. But uh, we need to do it. The next step should be to incorporate a wider range of renewable energy sources uh, so that we can grow that uh, grow the, the renewable energy production in Hong Kong. Uh, what we have learned in, in, in Europe, uh, you need to set you need to set renewable electri electricity targets. If you don't set targets, then there will be uh, and we all need to agree on that of course within the Hong Kong community what these targets are. But that's the only way to get it done. And these, these, and these uh, targets can be quite ambitious, as we can uh, uh, have seen in Europe, up to 100% by 2030 or 100% in 2050. And how, how do we get to these high percentages in Europe? Because we also look at imports. Uh, we can uh, we're looking in Europe, we look at imports of renewable feedstock. We've seen that, for example, in the UK, uh, they say, okay, if we really want to get to these targets, then we cannot only produce that ourselves. We need renewable feedstocks from other parts to, to get these, uh, to these percentages. Or imports of renewable electricity. That's uh, something we're looking at. Uh, when, uh, the example of Singapore, uh, they're saying, okay, let's look at regional uh, power networks and uh, and see if they can uh, we can import more renewable electricity from across the border their space they have a lot of space and we have the they have the space we have the money let's get it done thank you very much <laughs>